The Global Cyber Threat Environment, Module 3, Cyber Terrorism and Cyber Crime. Objectives. Once you have completed the readings, lecture, activity, and assessment, you will be able to assess the variety of cyber crimes and their prevalence. Describe the many ways that terrorist organizations use technology to further their cause. Welcome to Global Cyber Threat Environment, Module 3. The title of this module is Cyber Terrorism and Cyber Crime and will be given by our guest lecturer, Dr. Candace Griffith. Dr. Griffith received her PhD in Sociology from UNLV and is currently an assistant professor in the Department of Social Sciences at Augusta University, where she teaches courses in criminology, cyber crime, and social research methods. I'm going to talk about cybercrime with a brief focus on cyber terrorism. Cybercrime and other activities takes place in cyberspace. Cyberspace is the environment within which communications and other online activities through internet-enabled digital devices take place. As with many issues in technology and new concepts, definitions vary widely depending on who is doing the defining. One definition of cybercrime could be computer-mediated activities which are either illegal or considered illicit by certain parties and which can be conducted through global electronic networks. Another definition states cybercrime is an illicit act that targets digital devices or is committed via the internet, computers, and related technology. Cybercrimes are perpetrated by actors who use technological devices unrestricted by physical and geographical borders. We can differentiate crimes where the computer is the instrument used to commit the offense, the target of the offense, or incidental to the offense. These are not mutually exclusive. One can use a computer to target another computer to commit a criminal offense. We can also categorize computer crime between old or conventional crimes committed with new technology and new crimes committed with new technology. For example, stalking is an old crime but with technology, one can transmit persistent, unwanted, or harassing communications from the comfort of their home. A new crime with new technologies can be best be understood using malicious code found in worms and viruses to dis disrupt internet activities. There are a range of commonly committed cybercrimes. For example, hacking refers to the unauthorized access to a computer or a computer system. Hacking has a long history, starting with the theft of long-distance phone service in the 1960s to infiltrating large companies to defeat their security systems. They can be white hat or good hackers, or black hat, hackers with nefarious motivations. The categorization depends on your perspective. Illicit markets include the ability to buy credit card details, drugs, firearms, forged passports and IDs, and murder for hire in some cases. For example, the Silk Road was famous for aiding in the sale of illicit materials and as such has been raided and shut down and has not re-emerged. Theft of data depends on the buyer and the type of data attractive to a thief could include trade secrets, classified military information, credit card details, espionage, and the piracy of copyrighted materials. For example, China has built a large market on pirating movies, clothing, and other copyrighted or trademarked materials. Fraud is obtaining something of value by means of deception. Fraud can include sales and investment fraud, the fraudulent ordering of goods, share market manipulation, auction fraud, unauthorized funds transfer, embezzlement, ATM fraud, and forgery. The most common type of this crime is the 419 Nigerian advance fee fraud. The 419 refers to the section in the Nigerian criminal code referring to fraud. The scam is to send out thousands of emails in the hope that one person will respond and send money. The sending of money is usually done multiple times and can cost individuals tens of thousands of dollars. Another example of fraud is if you order goods online with a stolen credit card and have them sent to a temporary address and then make off with the goods without actually paying for them. This is the fraudulent ordering of goods. Unauthorized public disclosures include national security information or state secrets that have been leaked or obtained through disreputable means. In addition, personal intimate details can be revealed to humiliate or shame individuals. 
One such example is increase in posting revenge pornography. Some researchers have referred to this practice as non-consensual pornography because one party did not consent to their intimate encounter to be shared. Phishing, with a PH, is the act of sending out a large number of emails hoping to hook one fish. These types of emails include variations such as your password is about to expire or you have violated the terms and conditions of your online banking. Please log in to correct this. Or your account has been suspended. Click here to remedy the problem. The emails mimic the real site and many people click and log in with their credentials, allowing the offender to gain access to your accounts. Money laundering is a common cybercrime by using online banking and cryptocurrencies to turn dirty money into clean money. Stalking and bullying are greatly facilitated using digital technologies to aid in the concealment of one's identity or presence. One can bully or stalk without actually confronting the individual. Criminal conspiracies use technology to facilitate the dissemination of information through encryption and embedding information in an image called steganography. These digital communications between criminals can impede detection and enforcement of said conspiracies. Cyberterrorism is another area related to crime but has its own definition and can be understood as crime adjacent. Cyberterrorism loosely refers to the application of digital technology to terrorist activity. Denning defines cyberterrorism as unlawful attacks against computers, networks, and the information stored therein when done to intimidate or coerce a government or its peoples in furtherance of political or social objectives. Defining cyberterrorism is equally difficult as defining cybercrime since there are so many variations. The definition, again, depends on the agency doing the defining. Cyber terrorists are generally non state actors with different mo motivations than cyber criminals. They are usually organized and have multiple members. An example of a terrorist group using technology for various purposes is ISIS. Cyberterrorism does not solely exist online, but can have a real world presence with the aid of technology in spreading their message to a larger global audience. There are several ways technology can help facilitate and expand cyberterrorism. The first is how intelligence may be easier to collect by hacking an adversary's computer system. Groups are able to recruit individuals who can perform highly technological tasks, which varies from previous tactics of these groups, which relied on more traditional methods of intelligence gathering. Second, communications become easier with encryption and steganography. The fear of intercepted messages is reduced in the age of the internet, and more planning and communication can occur without an increased fear of state intervention. Third, propaganda aimed at the general worldwide audience or specialized audience bypassing journalists and government censorship helps to divide people and to seek social change by influencing thoughts and ideas of a given populace. Fourth, psychological warfare can be used to fabricate an impending attack and distract law enforcement and intelligence services to their true activities and targets. Fifth, fundraising and recruitment is easier with the help of technology. The ability to reach hundreds of thousands, even millions of supporters willing to donate or join their fight. There have been calls for companies to not accept money from certain groups, but there are ways to conceal a group's identity. And finally, training potential terrorists by teaching techniques and skills can be accomplished without the travel, which may raise, red, uh, raise flags. The Boston bombers learn their bomb making skills online. Groups can radicalize individuals within their own respective countries. Cyberterrorism is prevalent around the globe and is growing as more people find their websites and read their propaganda and begin to support the cause. Understanding how various groups use the internet to recruit, fundraise, and disseminate their message is key to fighting and reducing the instance of cyberterrorism. I have provided a brief overview of some of the main types of cybercrimes and outlook on terrorism found online. Crimes happen around the globe and can cost billions or trillions of dollars. As of now, there is no really good way to gauge how much cybercrime is out there. We also do not have solid figures on the costs involved in cybercrime. One does not need costs to know how much crime is out there, but it is helpful in understanding the scope of the problem. In the U.S., it is estimated that losses exceed $60 billion in the piracy of goods, at least $1 trillion in losses to businesses, and even greater losses in identity theft and credit card fraud. The figures are difficult to solidify because the extent of cybercrime is unknown. The FBI estimates victim losses in 2016 to be around $1.3 billion. 
Some estimate the global cost of cybercrime between 450 and 600 billion dollars. The Internet Crime Complaint Center receives over 800 complaints per day and approximately 280,000 per year just in the U.S. The costliest crimes in the U.S. are business email compromise, about $360 million, confidence fraud or romance fraud, $219 million, non-payment, non-delivery, about $138 million, and investment fraud, around $123 million. No one age group is more susceptible to cybercrime, but those over 40 tend to lose the most money. As technology becomes more prevalent, our understanding of risk involved in sharing information and being connected is ever-present. There will always be some level of risk, but with an informed populace, that risk can be reduced. Cybercrime and terrorism are here to stay, and with that, it is our duty to understand as fully as we can the potential problems and issues these areas pose to a global society. Quiz question one. True or false? Cybercrime and cyber terrorism are mutually exclusive activities. A, true. B, false. The answer is B, false. Quiz question two. True or false? Technology can facilitate cyber terrorism by providing such tools as encryption, steganography, fundraising, recruitment, and training. A. True. B. False. The answer is A. True. Activity. How much do you know about the cost that cyber criminals pose to the U.S. economy? Download the FBI's latest Internet Crime Report. Use this report to build a presentation that highlights the following. What are the most common types of cyber crimes reported by victims? What are the most common cyber crimes in terms of dollar losses? Which age groups are more likely to be victimized by cyber crimes? Visit your local law enforcement agency's website and answer the following in your presentation. Does your agency report incidents of cyber crimes? What are the most common types of cyber crimes reported in your area? Finally, research best practices to protect yourself in cyberspace and include these best practices in your presentation. Thank <laughs> you.